Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire! Boom! Okay, so Metallica whiskey. I've been looking forward to this. Now we, I wanted to do this because we didn't get to really honor Dave on on Dave's death. So, um, and we have got a lot of friends who are close with Dave. Dave Pickerel. I did not know him personally. For those that don't know, Dave Pickerel is he. Well, he is the brainchild behind Whistle Pig and half the third of the whiskey industry. Um, and he was also the brainchild behind this whiskey. He worked with Metallica to source, create, blend, right. make this whiskey happen. Right. Right. So usually I go in blind. This one though I've had before, mm -hmm. and I, I will admit, the first time I was having a sip of this whiskey, it's like, okay, well, celebrities and bands, they're gonna do stuff, it's gonna be like 40%, and it's gonna be like, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be usually right. amazing. It's like, oh, Dan, this has character. Well, this has, this has- uh, Because you got Dave Piccarello Yeah, involved. I didn't know he was involved in this yes, thing. Yes, because he's an artist, right? So, and so this is 45%. It's a blend of straight whiskeys. To rye, bourbon, and just whiskey. Yeah. Finished in black brandy casks. To Metallica's credit, yeah. they didn't just release a vanity whiskey that no. they could source as cheaply as possible. They found uh, like a badass and they collaborated to make something that is, this is on the nose, this is yeah. rye heavy. This is a very, yeah. very rye whiskey on the nose. Now, but there are elements of bourbon in here. Each release has a set list that goes with it. Yeah. So that uh, they can tell you which songs were played because they actually put these in the black brandy casks. Yes. And then they played Metallica music to agitate the barrel. Okay. That's that's the rumor. So and this is our set list. Oh. It was selected by Lars. Oh, so this is they they each have set list versions. Yeah. This is batch what, 83? Uh yeah, 83. 83. The shortest straw, mm -hmm. wasting my hate, the unforgiven part three, mm -hmm. trapped under ice, Atlas Rise, No Leaf Clover, No Remorse, Disposable Heroes. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I, I get a, I get a little bit of a note of shortest straw, with a slight nose finish of wasting my hate. <laughs> really? Oh, it's the damnedest no. thing. They. It's the damnedest they thing. Didn't, they, I'm uh, getting so much Sandman in here. Yeah, there's no Sandman in the playlist. I don't know how you're getting there. <laughs> it must just be in the ethos. <laughs> What's funny is I am I have never listened to Metallica. The only reason that I know Metallica uh, musically is because I gave guitar lessons for many years and I had to learn Metallica songs in order to teach them to students because I would get these 12 year old kids coming and go, I want to learn Inner Sandman. And it's like, well, okay. Right. So I know how to play Metallica songs only because I had to teach them to, to uh, other people. Well, you are 40, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking uh, of four, I've got an embarrassing music story, but I won't. Maybe I won't share it. It's, and it's, it's actually, embarrassing to me. When it's actually, well, it's actually Daniel's birthday today. Mm -hmm. I just learned this. You, you know, you seeing me learn this? Wait, wait, wait. So here's the thing. You know how private I am? Yeah. I changed my birth date on Facebook. Did you? Because I don't want anyone to tell me happy birthday because it annoys the shit out of me. You know so the day, about a week before my birthday, I changed my birth date to June. And then after my birthday, I change it back right. because that way I remember when to change it again. You know, I think that didn't work. I think that didn't work because it's the 40th. For most things, most things, Daniel is way, way more of a curmudgeon. Yeah. Like, to the clinical level. For birthday, though, <laughs> for, for birthdays, though, <laughs> I'm more of a curmudgeon than Daniel. How? I have told friends to their face when we're at their special birthday dinner, you need to grow the hell up. Birthdays are for kids. You're 37 years old. Yeah. Birthdays aren't a thing. Yeah, they're this for is what I'll do. They're for children. You get up to 22. <laughs> you get up to 22. 21's a big deal, fine. Uh, and I'll give you another one after 20, no, 21. Uh, the 22nd birthday, then screw you. Uh, you don't get a birthday every year. Uh, <laughs> all, all, every, every, like the 30s, the you 40s. You just get mile marker birthday. Yes, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, until you die. You'll so, get every 10 years. But you know what? I don't care it's your birthday. This is silly. We're grown ass people. <laughs> if you want to go out and have a lovely dinner, Let's just go out and have a dinner. Any night of the week. We don't need to have this context. This is like a this premise. You know of a what birthday. this is? This is Lewis 
uh, Black, the ultimate rage uh, comedian. Did I Louis Black her on her birthday? Yeah, totally. Okay. R Louis Black says this about Halloween. He's like, D if you're an adult, you don't get to f dress up on Halloween. Right. That's bullshit. Right. If you're an adult, you can dress up whenever you want. Right. You can go to work today as Batman right. just because so, you want to be Batman. So here's. This is why I'm more of a curmudgeon. All right. This is why, seriously, this isn't just a philosophical position. Right. This is me putting it into practice. <laughs> I had people coming to me saying, hey, it's like Daniel's birthday coming up. Let's you shoot know, videos. I, I'd like to, you know, shoot some videos, do some fun, some fun things for yeah. your birthday, blah, blah, blah. I got blah. sent a video. Here's the thing. They're saying this to me, and I know in I less than 24 <laughs> hours, it's my birthday. Yeah. I'm not saying anything. Yeah. Because it's not really a birthday. I'm a grown ass adult. Well, Birthdays don't count. So I just. Because yeah. yours wasn't your 40. No, it was a 40. It was like. I'm, I'm, yours was 38. I'm 32. Right? 30. Wait, what? <laughs> no, so. I'm 38, yeah. Yeah, so 40. It turns out it's a thing. Uh, yeah. It's I did get sent some cool videos by people, and that was nice. <laughs> Since it's my birthday, you want me to tell an embarrassing story? First, let's get some tasting notes. That's what we do on my birthday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, first, here's the tasting notes. Uh -huh. Because I felt like we got a little off we did. topic. So, so if, okay. you, if you like rye, mm -hmm. you're most likely really going to like this whiskey. It, this smells closest to a finished rye. Yes. Versus like a, a finished bourbon or anything else. Like a like a rye finished in bourbon barrels almost. Yeah, this is in the family of the Angel's Envy uh, rum rye. Mm -hmm. This is uh, when we did that Glen Evan. That, yeah. You know, it's, it's in the category of a finished rye as far as overall presentation, I think. Yeah. Um, I am glad that this was a legit whiskey because I'm getting some like some corn sweetness it's going to be the traditional rye spice notes that i'm getting but those aren't like thin and whenever you have any big name band celebrity entertainer involved in a whiskey they could phone it in and they can they know they can make a lot of whiskey just off their name this is actually legit a good whiskey no of the branded whiskeys they this may be one the either the best yeah. Or top three. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm trying to think of other celebrity whiskeys that we've had well, that I actually liked. And admittedly, I can't think of any. Admittedly, rye is not in like the top tier of our favorite whiskeys, but in terms of a nice representation. Because this is balanced and finished. Yeah. Uh, you know what it reminds me of? I just realized what it reminds me of. It reminds me of a High West product where they're mixing barrels and yeah. finishing things like that mid, uh, you know, dr mid I would dram. say I probably like the midwinter dram. Because it wasn't, it wasn't so long ago that we did the High West. All right. I think I probably like that a little bit better. Yeah, me too. But this is this is really nice. I really like this. But this is scalable and Is it? Yeah. How do we know it's Well, scalable? because it's got it's got just American whiskey in it as well. Oh, is this came from a guy? Yeah, Ryan Kurt. Ryan Kirk, you magnificent! Kirk? Wait, wait, wait. Kurt. 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 Ryan Kirk, you magnificent! Bastard! He's also a whiskey sommelier. Oh, okay. Yeah, he brought it to class. You heathen dog. So what's in the taste? So the nose to me is all that rice spice, mm -hmm. but the taste is... Am I getting like a, like a spicy vanilla? Yeah, you really are. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you, I'm looking for the dark notes because I because black brandy, right? right. Um, and I'm not finding dark notes. I'm finding the light floral yeah. vanilla finish, which is... Odd. Spicy vanilla. It's good, but it's, yeah. It's really good. It's, um, it's not a hard candy. You know when you have, what's that, uh, that caramel stick that you used to be able to chew on and eat, but it wasn't quite hard candy and it wasn't quite chewy, and it came in a flat? I don't know. Uh, sugar Daddy. You grew up in a different era. Sugar Daddy. I grew up in the, I'm not that old. Sugar daddies, right? right? It, it was a flat, caramel, slightly chewy candy, but you really sucked on it like a sucker. But were there's originals? Yeah, it's not that butter favorite scotchy. candy of nursing. This home. is a yeah, <laughs> where te teeth toothlessness is a problem. So yeah. Uh, anyway, no, it's got that slight chewy candiness to it. Mm. Right. We got yeah, the, we yeah, we got comments. We got comments. Okay, we bring it up. We'll do comments. comments. We got comments. We're only ten minutes in. We're fine. We got comments. We got the Eric Schultz here. Morning Tribe, a friend of mine who lives in New York City wants me to send a bottle from New York from a New York distillery. But I'm drawing a blank and thought y'all might be able to fill them in for me. Oh, okay. 
So here's the thing is, I don't know New York distilleries that well, but I know two. Did you add that I water? actually like? No, I just added more whiskey so oh. that we could add water. Okay. Um, uh, there's two that I like, but you guys need to comment uh, because I know the distillation community is growing in New York. Okay. So Hudson. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we met the Hudson yeah. guy like a long Ralph time ago. Ralph is amazing. He's a nice so, guy. So Hudson and Kings County. Okay. Either one of those would be a good direction to go, but you guys comment if you know something I don't know. What kind of jobs are available to whiskey sommeliers? Uh, distilleries, distilleries and YouTube channels aside. Which is a... This is Jason Warner. Yeah, it's a, it's a real question. So, say you want to be a sommelier, but you don't want to work in the industry. Which is normally not true of a wine sommelier, but because we're doing a whiskey marketing school. Right. It's very true of some of our whiskey sommeliers. So I would say about a third of our whiskey sums have no intention of ever working inside the industry. Yeah. The beverage and food industry. Do you know my answer to this? Yeah. So, uh, what we are teaching them is a magical skill of storytelling, marketing, communication, and magical moments where they can take, uh, so for example, Paul Boomer. Yeah. Who's uh, an incredible uh, marketing consultant. Yeah. He could take this to create magical events for clients consumers right. and people to create an environment where you get to know people without the shitty networking vibe, yeah. but let's hang out and drink whiskey together so instead. You said the word. Yeah. People suspect I'm a psalm secretly. I'm not. No. I've just been doing a lot of videos here. The the word, I'm allergic to networking. Yeah. It's not a, it's a the thing where you pass out business cards and try and do small talk and then, yeah. you know, do the exchange of little stupid pieces of paper that hopefully you'll do business someday if they only give you a call. That's just such, such a waste of, maybe you're amazing at it, such a waste of my time. Uh, the, I found the best approach to have any kind of professional exchange is to just, hey, we'll get to business in a bit. Let's just have like a fun experience. But now let's just hang out. Let's just hang out. Let's have a fun experience. Let's learn something interesting. And whiskey, because it's so uh, popular and sticky and magnetic, there's a lot of built-in interest. It's easy to have people gather around and worst case scenario, they show up, they learn some stuff about whiskey and nothing ever happens. And they had a good time. But whiskey is one of these things where it's the excuse to gather around yes. and enjoy each other's company. And if right. there happens to be a fit, professionally, so be it. That I, works much better for I totally agree. for human beings. <laughs> I totally agree. Than you know people that are like these networking machines. I, uh, so what I would say is, uh, it doesn't need to be a whiskey sommelier, mm. but learning the skill of learning how to host a group of people mm -hmm. around a shared passion that is nerdy enough to be interesting, but not so in depth that. It's a true science gathering, right. but you can still actually hang out. There are very few things like that in the world, uh, and alcohol is one of them. I think you could do the same thing with beer. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, food. Yeah. So really, anything that you consume while hanging out. Yep. So it's limited, I think, to the category of things that you do while hanging out with people. I mean, there could be things like sports, they could right? Be music too, but then you want to listen to the music and not talk to the Yeah, people. and I was going to say, you know, things like rock climbing or something, but then you're about the climbing, you're not about the hanging out. So, so food and drink is really it. What they're specializing here is basically just how to do that with whiskey extremely well. Yeah. Fair enough. The water made this boring. Did it? It made it... Did you put water in mine? It, yeah, it made it smell like Fruit Loops. No, shut up. Yeah. I just got this weird Fruit Loop note <laughs> to the nose. And the taste is flat. So, how much water did you put in mine? I just, I mean, the, the droppiest of drops. Really? Yeah. It didn't taste like it doesn't. No. It, it tastes like I watered it down. It tastes like you put like half water no, in there. No, no, I absolutely so, did not. Dave, Don't water it down. Dave, you did us a solid by keeping it at this and not taking it down to 40. And speaking of, here's to Dave, who had an unbelievable impact on the whiskey industry yep. in his lifetime. R.I.P. Thank you, sir. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.